Welcome to the complete collection of Larry Bird's Greatest Stories Part 3. It's been a while since I've come on camera and I've shown my face and said what's up, so I wanted to do this really, really quickly before the video begins. I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you. Like, I was reading through a whole bunch of comments last week and I was just like, man, the, like, look how nice these comments are. Unbelievable, you guys are the best. So, I just wanted to jump on here and say a massive, massive thank you to everybody, all the subscribers, all everyone that, you know, shows support on the videos. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, that's all I really had to say. I hope everyone's enjoying the playoffs. And um, if you enjoy these videos, it, it would really help me out if you could leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and hit that notification button. But without further ado, here's part three of the complete collection of Larry Bird's greatest stories. I, I want to avoid the, the phrase trash talker, but he did do some of that too. The X Man, he didn't play you had a sore knee, but my point to you is this: uh, Larry gave me, he gave me, uh, he gave me 50 and three quarters. Oh my! Everybody <laughs> shooting the shit. And Ronnie Rogers said, hey, Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. And Larry looked at me, and he, then he looked at Mark, and he said, uh, uh, Mark, I'm going to go down. I'm going to come off the screen. I'm going to come off the screen. I'm going to catch it right there. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to shoot it in the rookie's face, and then I'm going to run down the floor. And he runs down to the post and posts me up. And boom, boom. That's all he said. It's going to be a long night, Sal. <laughs> One dribble going right, spin. Shot, bucket, and then he did. He did it. Like there's, he did. There that. was nothing I could do about. It. I, I want to avoid the, the phrase trash talker, but he did do some of that too. What did he say on the court when you guys were having your battles? Uh, Larry was not the one to just talk a lot of trash, uh, but the things he would say to you would would stick there. Uh, I mean, if it was just a simple uh, oop, I'm wear you out this play or uh, face or just the way he said things, it made it very face? hard. Face? But it's scored two points and in your say, face. You in know, your face. he didn't have to go the extra two words in your, he just said face and you knew he meant business. At times, uh, especially I had my differences with uh, Chuck Person, who was a very lively talk out on the floor. <laughs> yeah. I think he gets you into that mode of talking a little bit more. I was going to say, you reminded me of a story when I was talking about talking about Chuck Person, that uh, Bird apparently was playing one on and just torching him one night. I think he had 35. And as he's shooting the ball, he says to Person, I'm the best F player to ever come from uh, Indiana. I'm the greatest player ever out of Indiana. He shot a three-pointer in his face, all in there. And he says that right to Person as he's shooting. And of course, the shot goes in. One thing Larry said to me, uh, he never did any sugar honey iced tea talking. He just kind of like played. Mm -hmm. and, but this one time he said, came down and I'm playing him. This is 1987. We're playing for the champion. And he goes, um, Coop, I'm about to wear your ass out. So I'm locked in on him now. And I'm, <laughs> this is the behind me and I'm here. And Robert Parrish comes down and sets a pick. And I was hard to set a pick on, so I knew I was going to get through it. But Larry takes me in. He comes off this pick, and he comes off right about the elbow. Dennis Johnson threw him the basketball, and Kareem steps up. So Larry catches the ball, and I'm right behind him. And he catches the ball, and he goes up. I said, I'm going to smack this shit. <laughs> he goes up. Kareem is there. My hands are there, and I'm like this. I don't know how this guy got the ball to Robert Parrish. But he throws it to Parrish for a pick and roll play. Parrish gets the ball slam dunk. Boston goes up. The fans going crazy. He goes, I told your ass. And to me, that might seem like something simple, but that's the greatness of a great player in Larry Bird. And from that point forward, we never talked. <laughs> he never said anything else. But it was just the fact that he got he he wore my ass out on that play. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the thing I respected a lot about him because Larry could score with or without the basketball. That kind of player there, that's the ones that you like to see and like to play against. Is there any story that just uh, that you forgot about that you found notes? Oh, for yeah, I had little notes like and stuff. So again, Larry Bird, he, he could hold all these things in his head during a game. So he'd, he'd have a shooting drill at the old Boston Garden. That was, a, that was a routine at the garden. You'd about four, four thirty in the afternoon. I was an early guy. I'd set up early. The garden would be dark, dark garden. Come out with an equipment guy and just do the perimeter, shoot for half hour. And all you heard was swishing. Be a little bit of light by that court. The, the, the equipment guy was Joe Cotato. Larry would come out. He brought him to Indiana when he went there and loved this guy, the equipment guy. 
and uh, Larry do the perimeter, and I'd be setting up in my Stone Age computer porter bubble on the sideline right next to the bench when they used to let us sit in those seats. The lowly riders had those seats next to the bench. I'd get there early, plug in my Stone Age computer right next to the bench. He'd come over, he called me Scoop. He said, Scoop, what are you working on? I'm saying, I'm doing an early story. And Larry, you know, he liked to break chops. He'd come over, and uh, if he missed a shot during that thing, he'd say that the bull gang set up the, the rims, something wrong with the rim. You know, otherwise, that never that would have gone in. And uh, he'd come over and he'd say, what are you working on, Scoop? And I'd say, well, I'm doing an early edition newspaper story about your free throw streak. He was coming up on Calvin Murphy's 88 consecutive free throws. You were approximating the NBA record for consecutive free throws, Calvin Murphy at 88. So don't miss one tonight or I'll look bad in the paper. <laughs> it's going to look stupid if they open it up tomorrow morning and you miss when I'm writing about the streak. This is how it works. Sure enough, first half, he goes to the line for two, and the foul line is lined up right where we're sitting if he looks over. He's at the line. He makes the first. He looks over and winks at me. He looks over and winks at me before he makes the second. <laughs> I mean, guys don't do that today. And But he was always thinking about these things. It's like paying off a bet in the middle of a game. He was doing two things at once. First made it to the NBA. Who was the first person to bust your ass? Man, uh, I'm going to keep this real with y'all, man. My ass got busted real early, man. I came into the league, man. I was playing <laughs> Um, you know, you know how some of them vets, man, they play you to the team, man. I got played down in Boston one night. We was playing uh Boston Celtics, so the great Larry Bird. I didn't really know much about it. you know, I'm from Indiana, Larry's from Indiana. I knew about the history of Larry, but I didn't realize how he really got down. <laughs> when we got to when we got when we got to Boston that morning, I knew someone, right? I saw an X-Man, and he was limping around the court a little bit like he was sore. I figured he'd be all right, you know. Xavier McDaniel. Xavier McDaniel. I figured he'd be all right by the time. I go to the game on the early bus. I get there. They come out on the court. They say, hey, Sean, uh, you starting the night against uh, Larry. And I was like, well, damn. Okay. I'm all for it, though, you know? So um, he gave me 50 and three quarters. Oh my! <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> he, was, he was hitting everything, he and he talked to me the whole entire game. He what did he say? He do. Well, first of all, he asked me to jump ball. He said, "You the cat that broke all my records in high school, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's me." Uh, he said, "I got you for you tonight." So every shot he was calling at the defensive end, he would tell me, "He'd be like, when I get down to the other end, I'm gonna pump fake you, get a hand uh, one on you." Look at you, <laughs> off the glass. That's how cold Larry Bird yeah. was. And this, that's mm. the legend. Like, people say that he was one of the dirtiest trash talking, one of the best trash talkers. Like, the one game he played and told, dude, I'm shoot all left hand buckets on you. Okay. So, he really talked like that. Larry told all of us and the media, he said, Tomorrow night's the last game of the trip. I'm going to play this one left-handed. I, I remember because I was there, and it was, it was at a time when, um, you know, Mikhail was still coming off the bench, and uh, so he had he scored the first eight points of the game left-handed, <laughs> and, and, Jer and Jerome, Jerome Kersey was guarding him at the time, and, and, and I remember this, because we had a great trash-talking team. I mean, we had ML Carr, we had Mikhail, we had Bird, we had... Um, you know, Ainge was a yacker. I mean, we we just we we had we had guys with with great creativity with that, and and, and I'll never forget it. Mikhail yells out, "Hey, Jerome, wait till you start shooting right-handed." <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, so you know, being from the streets, man, I was to the point of like, look, I'm going to foul him so hard that he's going, he's basically going to take his will. He started shooting the ball with his left hand, man. I was trying to find foul his right arm. He was shooting with his left hand, banking it off on me, looking at me, still slapping me on my butt and everything, man. Tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> now see, that's something that he didn't hit you. He like he didn't hit you on the butt. Now, now I got to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Larry, uh, he actually invited me to his house that summer after the game, man. He told me he said that's the best defense I've seen so far. The best effort. I get yeah. you. Yeah, still I gave you fifty and you three quarters, compete. but that was the best effort I've seen in a long time. You had to guard Larry. What was that like? Uh, the the worst thing was when you guys were in pick and rolls because you know Kevin or you or, or, or Chief. Uh, yeah Chief came up and it was a quick pick and roll with a slip. 
Uh, so when I first came over my rookie year, I remember you were talking about 86. Uh, I remember the game, uh, my rookie year, uh, Mark Aguirre didn't want to play against the Boston Celtics for whatever reason. Celtics bring it up court to Larry Bird from three. It's yes! Larry Bird! Woo! A three-point shot with four seconds to go, and the Celtics lead by one. Uh, could have been called Bird Eye. Yeah, pretty much. So I was, the, I think, at that point, the third small forward, and uh, Larry gave us 50. Try again, he's short, and Larry Bird, an enviable pass right there. Zeesting finally misses, but Bird does the long arms. Bird gets a three, three points and three point field goal shooters. Is left. Larry Bird, Larry Bird. And to go. Ellis goes. Larry Bird with the left hand. Bird, three pointer. Count it. Game for Boston. Larry Bird only needs five four with 12 seconds. Bird, three pointer. Count it. Oh boy. Next year, uh, for whatever reason, somebody else didn't play again. And, <laughs> and I was starting and I go, okay, uh, do you want Bird or Mikhail? <laughs> oh, great choice. And, uh, and I was going, isn't, isn't Walton starting? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was uh, listening to Jamal Mashburn on a podcast the other day, and he was talking about when the college players were practicing against the Dream Team. And pra- Have you heard the story that he was telling? No. To play against the Dream Team. This was the legendary game where the college guys came in and Chuck Daly let y'all tear their ass up, and as soon as y'all started getting back, he ended it, right? Chuck Daly had scheduled a scrimmage against a select group of college players. So yeah, so funny. So when we got an invitation, it was eight of us. It was myself, Bobby Hurley, Alan Houston, uh, Chris Weber, Rodney Rogers, Eric Montrose. Shout out Eddie Rodney Martin. Rogers, man. Shout yeah. out OG. Yeah. And um, and Grant Hill was on that squad. I think it's gonna be a good matchup. You know, it's no advantage on either side. For the college players, it was a chance to see how they'd match up against the world's best. So we get to La Jolla, San Diego, and we check into the Marriott. We go up to our floor, and we're walking in the corridor, and we see this tall white guy coming down the hall. And I'm like, damn, that looked like Larry Bird. So Larry Bird coming down the hallway, me and Chris Webber, and Larry Bird, you don't realize how big Larry Bird is until you stand up close to Larry yeah, Bird. Exactly, as a kid. Yeah, man. Larry Bird, legit 6'10". Larry nah, Bird. real talk, when I yeah, first stood up against him, when he was coaching talk. the place, I was like, damn. So he, he walked by us and he says, y'all those college guys? And we was like, yeah, 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 we the college guys. And then he said, get some sleep, young fellas. And he looked at us and he said, get some fucking rest. It's going to be a long week and walked off. And we was like, what the hell? Larry- <laughs> Which out of got us it? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, OK. You know, we like, all right, what's going I, on here? I wanted to say what's up. And he just <laughs> came to me like this, like, dang. Yeah. So the next morning, we get up and we go to um, practice, and Roy Williams is our coach, but we only got eight. So we're like, well, how are we practicing? And what are we practicing for? So we spent, I want to say, an hour doing the three-man weave. And I'm like, what's going on here? Then they bus us to another location where the Dream Team is practicing. And these about 400 people standing outside uh, waiting for the dream team to come out. They take us up to a top floor and the dream team is practicing. They're finishing up their practice. And then they say, all right, get loose and stretch out. We're like, okay, we playing? They're like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna play next. So we get out the gates, like the first 15 minutes, we kicking they ass. <laughs> we, but we running them all out. Bobby Hurley in the lane, killing John Stockton. Bobby Hurley was dominant. So they stopped the game. These young kids, they were killing it. I remember Chuck saying, as soon as the, the game ended, we were getting ready to let media and it was a race of scoreboard. And turn off the scoreboard. I think we were up like 72, 66 or something, 64 or something like that. They just stopped the game. So we like, all right, this is halftime or some shit? They like, nah, the press coming in. Media comes in, scores, if not hundreds. They can sense something. You can feel the tension or you feel something in the air. 
Well, some of these college players we've just got through playing against probably should be on this team, but uh, <laughs> they'll get their chance. So that's when the, the, the thing came out that Chuck Daly let us win. Because they didn't they they were like they didn't want to hold a complete game because they knew it was gonna be downhill from there. Cause we were trying to prove that we could yeah, represent yeah. the country. Yeah. So we we um lit their ass up and then some happened, we're sitting there and we get back to the hotel. Rodney Rogers says something to, it's a group of them. It's Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and everybody's shooting the shit. And Rodney Rogers is talking smack to Larry Bird. Magic heard that shit. And we ain't think nothing of it. And Rodney Rogers all of a sudden tugs on Superman's cape. What happened after that? And here goes Rodney Rogers. He's talking the stuff that we were talking in our, in our other room. You know, our other room, we talking junk. Like, yeah, Magic didn't know what to do. And he goes to Bird right in his face. He says something like, Hey, Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. They ain't made a jump shot since the 80s or 80, one of the years they probably won a championship. 84. <laughs> there, there you go. And i never seen this. And this one, I was like, this is a different breed. Magic Johnson fed Larry Bird the ball probably about eight times in a row down court. Larry Bird got the ball on Rodney Rogers, and every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. Bird, uh, I, I remember one time coming to the corner, he pump fakes, and Rodney Rogers goes by. He says, welcome to the parachute club. It's three <laughs> in his face. And, you know, after, I don't know if it was magic or someone said something, something like, uh, you know, that kind of reminds you of 84 a little bit, don't it? One dribble, pull up, going left, off glass. Like, <laughs> fuck it. One dribble, going right, spin, shot, fuck it. He scored nine times or eight times in a row, left the court to go lay down because he couldn't sit on a bench. He had to lay down because of the back. back and said, young fella, look like 84, huh? And <laughs> Last time he made <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow. It was funny, the first time that I played in my rookie year, I guarded Larry Bird and it took me about 10 minutes to realize I should be probably guarding him instead of staring at him. You know? <laughs> And he came down, I was, it was funny, he came down one time and Mark West was the center on our team and, and Larry looked at me and, he, and then he looked at Mark and he said, uh, uh, Mark, I'm going to go down, I'm going to come off the screen, I'm going to come off the screen, I'm going to catch it right there, I'm going to turn around, I'm going to shoot it in the rookie's face, and then I'm going to run down the floor. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, that just happened. But did he talk to you or you weren't he good enough? He talked through me. He never, he never <laughs> He never addressed me. I love that. Yeah, he yeah, never addressed you're a rookie. You, yeah, you, he wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't talk. He wouldn't, I could imagine. He, he had no time for me. He just talked right through me to Mark West and told him what he's going to Like, I wasn't even there. And did Mark West? Mark West is going. Mark was like, all right. Okay, man, yeah, yeah, all right. He probably will. <laughs> and then he did. He did it. But there, he was, did there was nothing I could do about it. I get a charge when I tell someone on the, on the opponent's team that I'm going to hit the last second shot and then do it. That's what it's all about. Larry's open. One, three. I remember the Portland game. It was, I think it was Super Bowl Sunday. We were playing the Portland Trailblazers. He had like 52 points or something like that. We were down three. And he's a remarkable, crazy three-point shot. He was leaning. And, he, and I was like, there's no way he's going to hit a shot. DJ again to make the inbound pass. The double team in Bird. Larry, fake, fall away. Hits it at the buzzer. All right. He's leaning, falling. He's a three-point. I'm like, this guy's amazing. I was a Celtic fan growing up. I'm thinking I'm going to be a Celtic, you know. And then, you know, they pick Lynn Bias, and I got to go and play against Larry and those guys. It's something I've watched my whole life. I turn around, and Larry goes, What's up, Sal? What's up, Larry? He goes, You made it. Yeah, man. He goes, Oh, uh, y'all not double teaming? I said, Nah, just me on you. He goes, For real? I go, Yeah. Yo, 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 mouse in the house, mouse in the house. And he runs down to the post and posts me up. And boom, boom, it's called, he said, it's going to be a long night, Sal. <laughs> and Larry with a long jump shot.
you mentioned you you talked about Larry Bird and there was that one moment where I'm not sure if Isaiah lost his mind or or it was just the truth and Dennis Rodman said Larry Bird's just another he's just another white boy he's a, he's a good player but he's a you know it, it, it's basically because he's white um, I think it was 80, 86 87 so I, we were playing Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. So they gave me the task of guarding Larry Bird. <laughs> so it's guarding Larry Bird, I'm like this 25 year rookie in the league. They said, Dennis, you have to guard him. And I'm like, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> guard him. So I, that, was, that was my whole job to guard the toughest guy on the team, on, on the other teams. So, you know, so I'm guarding him. And every time I turn my head, he's over there in the three-point line. He said, I'm over here, Rook. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you know, I got to go out there and run out there like a dumb, dumb ass. <laughs> so I just go out there trying to contest him. He hit the three. I'm like, okay, da 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 that's this. So that's like game six in uh, Boston. So I made the, the most, I guess, the most wrong decision that, mm. as a person can make. The Pistons had lost to the Celtics in seven games in the 1987 Eastern Conference Finals. And in Detroit's locker room afterwards, the questions were about the superstar who dominated them again. And then things got complicated. It starts because an unsophisticated Dennis Rodman is asked about Larry Bird. And let's be real. It's probably the first time in Dennis Rodman's life that a white guy tuned him up on the basketball court. Dennis Rodman just went to Larry Bird University. Larry Bird was the god in the NBA. You know, he's like the, the great white hope. At that time, I didn't know any better because I'm so used to being in the projects back then. So after the game, I said, that's many questions. How, how, how do you think, how, what do you think about Larry Bird? And I said, if Larry was a black guy, he, was, he just would be a regular old, regular old basketball player. And I didn't realize what I said, you know. The funny thing about it is just the fact that, you know, Rodman was in, was in his feelings. At that time, Warren was in his feelings. It was after a game. And, you know, Isaiah took the heat on. Yeah. And that's the thing about being a captain of your team. You're going to take the heat. You're going to make sure that you protect your players. I know what I was saying because I was so young and stupid. Um, I said, he was black. if he was black, he'd be just an average basketball player. Yeah, you got a lot of flack for that. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. You got a lot of oh, yeah. like, like it was yesterday. I'm, I'm just saying that that's actually what I said back then. And someone ran over with that comment and asked Isaiah Thomas, your teammate said something. Do you agree with it? And Isaiah did a great job of protecting him. It wasn't the fact that it was any disrespect to Larry Bird and his ability. It was just the fact that, you know what? Uh, uh, he's he's a player. We didn't want to look at color. So the thing is, he's a good player. Remember, you said you get here's the great white hope. <laughs> but it was just the fact that when you look at it, I was like that motherfucker bad as hell. <laughs> you know, you know, like he white, he can play. And it was more like I'm in Boston, but I'm in Boston, <laughs> and in Boston. But you know what was so cool about our team, though, that I still came to my defense. He took all that heat from me. He said, Dennis, just get in your car and drive back to Oklahoma. A very, very good basketball player. I think he's an exceptional talent. But I'd have to agree with Rodman. If he was black, he'd be just another good guy. <laughs> Isaiah, who clearly had the sophistication, picked the wrong white guy to make his point because larry was the baddest boy on the planet with that being said isaiah took the heat for that because all of a sudden it's like isaiah is going to protect us you know you know by all means necessary you know it's like okay it's just larry bird it ain't like he's is he special yeah he's special he's good i mean what else can you say 
know, just walking in this room and seeing everybody, it must have touched a lot of people. And, um, and that's why we're here. We're trying to cover up for each other. Isaiah, tell, tell me about the laugh. Now, is that a sarcastic laugh, or is that a laugh of someone who's saying, you know exactly what I mean? No, it's a very sarcastic laugh. I think anybody who knows me well. Do you regret the comment? I never made the comment. Do you regret piggybacking? Uh, I regret not being um, smart enough to never repeat someone else's quote. The comment's effect on Isaiah and his image was undeniable. But for the team, the impact was totally different. That was a turning point. Isaiah really came to my rescue. That right there was a telling moment for me and for the team that we'll do anything for each other. But those times were different then. Those times were different. It's a different era these days, but, but my career has, has escalated from that point on. Wow. From that point on, I learned, I learned, I learned. And the more I learned, the more I respect everything in, in life. So let's talk about Larry the Legend. Uh-oh. The resume is long, yeah. but he's really known for two things mostly, shooting, and talking trash on the court. Yeah. Which one bothered you the most? His shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, his shot was just so like perfect, you know, and, and not only was it perfect, you know, my mother-in-law nicknamed his, his jump shot Silent Death mm. because when he shot it, the ball just like rolled in the air and it was almost like it was playing a song the way it was like just moving in the air and then it would just swish through. I mean, it, it, his shot was just so, and he was just, you know, as a, as a competitor, I mean, he was a killer. I mean, just a straight killer. And, you know, again, I, you've heard me mention and talk about the Celtics a lot. It taught us a lot of great lessons. You know, he definitely talked a lot of trash, but at the same time, he was backing it up. And during that period of time, you know, all of us, all of us in the summer, I don't know if there was an NBA player who didn't try to shoot or imitate Larry Bird's shot in some way, shape, or form because it was so pretty and it was just so, he, he, was, he was great. You've told me a story about calling Larry the day after a championship, the day after, and what was he doing? Well, um, I, for, for me, it was a, a unique experience. First of all, I'll play with him, but after we won in 84, we went out, you know, I'd go after the game, you go up to eat dinner and do things like, you know, people do. But we get ready, so I call Larry the next day, and I call over and ask Dinah, I said, Dinah, where's Larry? The very next day after we won in 84, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bird is out running trying to get the championship, the next NBA championship. That's the kind of dedication that Larry Bird had. Go ahead. That's probably true, <laughs> but probably. I probably felt so bad when I got up, I had to do something to start feeling better. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, here are two videos that you might enjoy. Um, go check it out if you enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.